It's the Morgan Evans More or Less Pickleball Podcast coming at you in three, two, one, boom. My guest today is one of the most successful female senior pros the game has ever seen. Capping off another fantastic year by winning the Senior Pro Singles and Doubles at the 2019 Nationals. She competed on the WTA Tour for 10 years, has taught tennis and pickleball for a number of years in California. Her technique is impeccable. She seemingly just floats around the court. I am jealous. Just precision footwork. Her latest venture with her husband Darren is C&D Pickleball Nets, the official net sponsor of the PPA. We're going to talk about that, we're going to talk about downtime, backyard courts, her tennis career, maybe some beer, should be a good time. Please welcome Cammy McGregor. How are you, sweetie? I'm doing well, Morgan. How are you? I am as good as can be expected, I guess, in these times. We're uh, we're all surviving, right? Absolutely. Difficult times for everyone, but hopefully pretty soon here we'll get back on the court, back to some sort of whatever the new normalcy will be, right? Yeah, that's, I guess that's the big question. What is uh, the new normal going to look like? Time will tell. (laughs) So how have you been keeping busy in this, uh, in this period? Well, I haven't really picked up a pickleball paddle in about seven weeks, which feels very unusual. But what's keeping me busy is we're doing a backyard or actually a whole entire yard uh, remodel. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we've um, decided to uh, put some extra parking in the front. And now that we have the C&D pickleball net trailer, we needed more parking for that. And the big exciting news is eventually uh, there will be a pickleball court in our backyard. Oh, my God. Is there going to be a Cammy McGregor Invitational Tournament? Would you like to invite me now? <laughs> uh, we'll see. Possible. You know, this <laughs> might, the court might be the new destination for uh, pickleball tournaments, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Actually going to be poured tomorrow and wait 30 days, and then the court will be uh, ready to go. You have to wait 30 days? How are you going to do it just looking at the court? It's, it seems impossible. <laughs> I've waited this long. It's okay. I can wait 30 more days. (laughs) It was funny, though, because my husband and I kept going back and forth, pickleball court, no pickleball court, pickleball court. And I kept saying, I don't want to come home to a pickleball court. But in the long run, I kind of got to thinking like, you know what? Parties, good time. You know, why not? Let's do it. So we're really excited about it. That's that's incredible compromise there. Cammy McGregor finally succumbed to actually having a, a pickleball court. <laughs> what does the world come to? Jeez. I know. I have to make decisions on what color it's going to be. <gasps> oh, yeah. So they just lay the foundations and then you guys could still have plenty of time to figure out your colors. Yeah. We have, they're going to pour tomorrow. They're Right now they're laying the rebar and tomorrow mm-hmm. they're going to pour. And, and then we have 30 days to make the big decision. You know. Well, yeah. Are you thinking three, three tone or two tone? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I might have to take a, a poll on this. I'm thinking, I was thinking blue in the court, red kitchen, obviously white lines, but then I'm having a hard time on the border. Oh, yeah. So I was thinking maybe a different type of blue on the border. Like the kind of Indian Wells sort of blue? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that kind of deep, almost like a kind of a deep purple. Yeah, more of a blue, not so much purple. Okay, all right. Yeah, there's so many, I've been looking at so many photos online and, you know, then I just, I can't make a decision. So what do you, what do you think? What, what should I go two or three colors? I think, honestly, I think you guys should take your, uh, the C&D logo, um, look at the colors you've got there and incorporate them somehow into the court. Oh. And that's just good branding. Come on, let's think about this. That's a good idea. Mm. You know you know what those colors are, right? There's some kind of yellow or, or like a kind of a light orange and maybe a blue. 
I'm just I'm drawing a bit of a blank, I'll be honest. Well, do you know my favorite football team? Do I know your favorite football team? That is a firm no. Oh. But I now know that you like football. Oh, I love football. Good. Love, love. And who's your favorite team? Pittsburgh Steelers, baby. The Steelers. Okay, okay. How would I know that? I guess you wouldn't. Yeah. My beautiful signature paddle that Selkirk just put out. Oh, yes. Those colors are Steeler colors. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Well, wow, that's all coming together now. Jeez, I just, I never think I'm going to learn so much out of these podcasts, but you're, I'm really getting it today. This is good. Yeah. This, so the C and D uh, colors are the same Steeler colors. Now tell me, was it a long conversation when you and Darren decided to call it C and D and not uh, D and C? Because, <laughs> you know, D and C has a ring to it too. It does. I guess C just comes before D, so... Honestly, he says C for Cammy, the CEO. Uh, okay. And D for operations. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it was an announcement to the world, essentially, that you are wearing the pants in that relationship. Is that a fair statement? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No shame in that. What wife or girlfriend isn't, right? I mean. It's true. It's true. You, you guys are running the show. You guys, you know, handle it well, though. The best thing every woman on the planet does is at least allowing men to live in in the uh, delusional world that we might have a say in <laughs> anything, really. It's 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 a brilliant system you, you guys have. <laughs> We've worked very hard at it. <laughs> <laughs> you mastered it, I'd say. You know, we, we have to be trained and, and uh, you know. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. I think it's time for a game show. Let's do it. Welcome back to Pickleball Trivia. We've got a couple of contestants on the line ready to go head to head. First of all, I've got Nina Hon from South Carolina. How are you, Nina? I'm great. How are you, Morgan? I am surviving in style. <laughs> your, uh, your opponent today is Mr. Jordan Dayton from Utah. Jordan, what's up, my man? Uh, doing great here. Um, ex- excited to, to see how I can you know, try to keep up with Nina here. <laughs> so I hear you're uh, you're the man behind the pickleball list. Tell us just a little bit about that. Yeah, so you know, as I got started with pickleball, I uh, had a tough time trying to find people to play with and and things like that. And then I realized I have to join a hundred Facebook groups to you know get connected with people. And so it became overwhelming and daunting to find the information I needed. So I thought it would be nice to have a place outside of Facebook as well. Uh, where people can coalesce and ask questions about pickleball and talk about pickleball when they can't be on the court. So uh, we just did a 19 day challenge um, where we have worked with a bunch of pickleball pros and each one of them has taken a day. We called it the COVID-19 day pickleball fitness challenge. So it's been fun uh, working out with some of the pros and we look forward to doing some other cool things in the near future as well. Awesome. So pickleballlist.com. Perfect. All right. We'll check it out. Good stuff. Okay. Contestant number one will be Nina. Uh, She's going to have the serve and will be asked a pickleball related question. If Nina, you get that right, you just keep going. If you you manage to close out with uh, five correct answers, then unfortunately Jordan doesn't get a look in. But if you uh, get one wrong or you choose to pass, then it'll go over to Jordan who will get the point and take the serve. First player to get to five points is the winner and the proud owner of elite bragging rights, I would say, as well as, um, you know, untold millions in uh, Selkirk gift vouchers. <laughs> Certainly yes. untold. Let's be, let's be clear. Let's be clear on that. <laughs> okay. You both ready to rock? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Starting off with you, Nina. Who is the executive director of the USAPA? <sighs> It's not Dan Santorium, right? It is not, no. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that was a valiant attempt. <laughs> However, unfortunately incorrect, so that means your opponent, Jordan, any ideas? I'm assuming we're not allowed to Google this. <laughs> no, you're not allowed to. This, this, there's an honor system here. Come on. All right, just, just making sure it's not who has the quickest fingers here. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I also don't know the answer there. I can't even attempt. 
All right. Well, there's there's honor in not attempting, I guess. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that means no points for either player. And Nina, you managed to, uh, by default, by the way, uh, <laughs> retain the serve. Moving on <laughs> to the next question. The paddle manufacturer Prince is part of which other well-known paddle company? Come on, Morgan. Come on, Nina. Aren't you supposed to give me multiple choice? No, not always. There's going to be there's <laughs> going right. to be some multiple choice. <laughs> All right, I got a pass. Okay, well that's a uh, that's a definitive pass. Yeah, that means over to Jordan. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I can attempt. You know, it doesn't hurt to try, right? It might I, make me I look agree. more ignorant than I really am. Come on, give it a go. Well, I was originally thinking like head, but that's like head and pen are together, right? But let's let's just throw that out as maybe they own prints too. Ooh, it was a nice idea. There was deliberation behind it, and I'll give you credit for that. A credit, but no points. Unfortunately, neither player got that one. All right. Oh, God. So far, yes. <laughs> it's a low-scoring game. Yeah. It's just zero zeros. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm, I'm hopeful for this next one. Yeah. Nina, you've somehow managed to uh, keep the serve twice now. Yep. <laughs> Back to you. After the ref calls the score, how much time does the server have to serve the ball? 10 seconds. 10 seconds? Nina, you're on the board. Well done. That's impressive. So I've, I've learned that all I really need to do is ask much easier questions, and you guys would be phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be great. So I think Morgan's over there with this list of you know questions he asks people normally, and then we're down to the third level, you know, this super easy column. <laughs> We're on Pickleball 101, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mixed it up a little bit this time. Um, I, I typically color code them a little bit and, uh, you know, go from that. But this time I thought, ah, I'll, I'll, I'll give them the benef benefit of the doubt, and, you know, see where they're at, and now I know, and uh, we'll move on from here. You can see this is, so. this is why I built a, an online community, because I personally know, know very little about Pickleball, but I love it. And if I can learn from other people, then then I'll be in a much Brilliant. better place. Yeah, no, you're right. It's a good system. Well done. Okay. Nina, your next question. True or false? If asked, the referee can indicate to the receiving team if they are in the correct position. It's true. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. <laughs> yes. And this isn't one of those, oh, now, uh, now Jordan gets a chance. Uh, because, well, there's only really two options here. I'm going to go on a limb here and and say false. You've nailed it. Nice work. Oh, wow. All that studying paid off. And I'm throwing a point your way just to say thanks. Sorry, Nina. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, you have, uh, you have the serve here, Jordan, and ready to continue your run. Um, you know, we'll call it a run. Jordan, which ball was to be used in the 2020 US Open? We need the make and the model. Um, the Franklin X40. Hey, congratulations. Yes. All right. Good man. Yeah. Good man. Well I done. actually did know that one. That wasn't just a, a point by default. <laughs> <laughs> I know that one too. <laughs> okay. Well, and Nina, the fact that you knew it as well, I'll just throw five points your way and you're the winner. No. And the serve. No. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, well done, Jordan. You have a 2-1 lead, and your next question, are you ready? Yes, sir. Right now, there are, there are two competing professional tours. What are they? The APP tour and the PPA tour. That's it. Okay. All right. Good job. Nice work. Okay, you're just cooking with gas now. I'm recognizing I say that way too much. Nina, do you think you can come back from this? I don't know. Uh, you know what? You never give up, right? Never give up. That's a good <laughs> attitude. Good attitude. This could happen. All right, Jordan, name two types of pickle ball machine. Oh, there's the lobster, and then there's the green one that has the those sides, <laughs> those clear sides that come up. Oh, it's like the court something. I can't remember. I uh, can't technically give you the green one. All right, that means Nina, you got a chance to steal the point and the serve. Okay, I'm gonna go with the tutor. Tutor, that's it. And the lobster. Yes, 
the tutor and the lobster. Yes. Well done. Good job. Good job. Did he know any other ones just out of interest? Playmate? Is that one of them? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a Playmate. I was looking at that one this morning. It looks pretty good. Is that for kids or is that one for adults? I think I think my kids have some Playmate stuff. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's a firmly an adult thing. It looks like it can fire a ball every second, uh, which is I think which is the fastest feed rate. And I'm not plugging them, but I really I've always wanted one that actually just you know gives a real kind of machine gun at you. Which is what happens when you're at the kitchen, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so Nina, you have two points. Uh, you are trailing by one, but it's not over. Okay. Yeah. Never give up. Let's okay. do it. According to the 2020 USAPA rulebook, there is no restriction to paddle thickness. True or false? True. Yeah, that's correct. Well done. There's no restriction. You can have, you can have a four-inch thick paddle if you want. <laughs> All right. So, Nina, you've tied the scores, three points each. you got a real opportunity. I think if you, if you get one or two more, that could be the ball game. Well, definitely two. Okay. Which female pro has the nickname... Trinity. Annalie Waters? That is incorrect, unfortunately. She has a lot of nicknames. Um, well, just because she has three names, that's what I want. A1 with. Steak Sauce apparently is one of her <laughs> nicknames. I'm not quite sure why. I guess she really loves it. But regardless, over to Jordan. Female pro named Trinity. Who is Jesse Irvin? Oh, and you've gone into a... Uh, <laughs> A Jeopardy situation <laughs> thing happening there. I like it. Very good. Congratulations. Jesse Irvin is correct. I actually didn't know that was her nickname. I thought it might actually be her middle name or something because, you know, all the times that I've seen it. But that's good to know that it's a nickname. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think she got it playing either paddle uh, or tennis, I forget. But it carried with her. Yeah, it's a cool name. Yeah. It's fun to hear all the stories behind everybody's nicknames. <laughs> Oh, you get extra. Sp you get a, uh, a free point if you can tell me my middle name. Morgan. Oh God! Well, I wasn't asking you, Nina. Oh. You don't have the. You don't have the serve. But I yes, thought you were just correct. throwing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> is it Morgan? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's weird. I, I didn't realize either. But my parents told me when I was about eleven. By the way, your name isn't actually Morgan. It's yeah. Anyway, <laughs> food for thought. <laughs> we're we're getting very distracted here, people. I'm, I'm certainly not going to be taking Alex Trebek's job anytime soon. <laughs> All right, so Jordan, you are one point away from the victory. Are you nervous? You're nervous, aren't you? A little bit. Pretty nervous, yeah. yeah. No, you should be. You should be. Don't choke. <laughs> <laughs> Name three tennis brands that have entered into the pickleball market. So Prince, and then Head, Pen, and Gamma. Ooh, that's a tricky one. Gamma, uh, they make strings, tennis strings. They don't make rackets, though. Wow, wow. <laughs> well, because, because that one's on the fence, I'm going to give you, uh, I'll give you one extra chance there if you can think of one more. Oh, man. Engage. Oh, very close, but that is incorrect. Nina, you got a chance here. He's, he's, he's done a lot of the hard work for you. Yep. So, Wilson? Wilson, yeah. So, Wilson is one of them. What were your other two? Prince and head, right? He said head. He did. He uh, he helped you out there. He's very nice. He's a good man, Jordan. Yeah, we're we're a team. We'd be a good team, Jordan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. I'll play with you anytime, Nina. Oh, yeah, she's four. She's four five apparently. So that's good. Oh, that's well. Maybe she won't play with me then. <laughs> probably, probably not. But you seem nice. Okay, so that means uh, Nina, you got a chance for the victory. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I have complete faith in you. If you play a volley from behind the kitchen, the ball hits your opponent, and then your momentum brings you into the kitchen, who wins the point? My opponent would win the point. I would have a fall. That is unfortunately incorrect. No, my momentum. Yeah, no, but the moment the ball hits your opponent, oh, the right. ball is dead. I didn't know that, actually. I just read that. The only good news is, is uh, you know, this is not one I'm, I can give over to Jordan. To... Yeah. This isn't a true and false pass on to me. No, no. Sorry, bud. Jordan, for the win. Here we go. What year was the first national championship? Oh, I know it has to be after 1965. Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's a good call. 2007? Ooh, really close, but no. Unfortunately, that's incorrect. That means over to Nina. 
This is for the win. You're both at four points. Anyone's game, really. The tension. 2009? Nine is correct. Oh, pulled it out. Ooh, Squeaked pulled it out. It out. <laughs> Nina and... Well played, Nina. <laughs> oh. You caught me with that baseline Clutch. shot. I couldn't handle it. <laughs> yes. Jeez. Wow. This, this one's going to go down in history. That I was think, a nail-biter. Um, we were awful. Na- <laughs> hey, awful is a strong word. Maybe... <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like the quiz master really let you down there, um, you know, throwing unnecessarily average questions at you, thinking that you could certainly, f- no. But, hey, uh, we you, both guys. have kids and we've been quarantined, so, you know, our brains are mush. It's, yeah, this is true. Yeah. Maybe. Hey, well, you guys, you guys both brought a smile to my face <laughs> and made me laugh. Oh, I mean, it's just like a good pickleball match. Yeah. Win or lose. Yeah, that's I had true. a great time. Maybe next time we'll do a rematch, but your kids are facing off against each other. Oh, there you go. I'll bring my three-year-old. Okay, I'll bring my six-year-old. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. I'll have to find some questions that, you know, are more suited to the, the three-year-old age uh, dem- demographic. Well, well I've, got, uh, I've got four to choose from. Oh, my so goodness. Four? Three, a five, a seven, and a nine. So. Okay. All right. Well... Is is your Nina? Is your six year old turning seven? Uh, I hope eventually. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it'll be a well, seven you... in September, and I have an okay. almost nine year old too. <laughs> All right. Nice. Isn't that funny how kids will never tell you how old they are? They're always going to tell you how old they're going to be. Yeah, or they'll say, right. oh, mine are yeah. doing the half year too, like they're six and a half. And oh, yeah, half. that's cool. cool. They're ready for it. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm 38 and uh, one fifth. Right. There about. There you go. So, I'm beating yeah. you by just a little, Morgan. Uh, I got I got you by. Uh, I just turned 39. Oh, I got so you whatever both. That difference. Is. I got you both by a year. Okay. Oh, all right. Go. All right. Look at us. Jeez. <laughs> Three amigos. That's right. Okay. Well, we we certainly uh, accomplished a lot today. This has been this has been real. This has been fun, but not real fun. Right. Uh, no. Nah. <laughs> It's, it was great. You guys, uh, I'm sure the pickleball masses are going to appreciate your efforts today. <laughs> oh, or get a good laugh. Yeah. One or the other. Well, yeah, that's a sign of appreciation. I've studied all the, yeah, I've yeah. Studied all the other stuff. This wasn't on my study guide. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. We just created a new study guide today. Yeah. <laughs> you changed the game. There's no doubt about it, really. <laughs> all right, well, you two stay safe. Thanks again for coming on the show, and hopefully, hopefully I will meet you on the court one day. Sounds great. Take care. Bye bye. Talk to you later. Cheers. Well, I'm not sure those two can pay me enough to keep this one off the air. Well, there were some tough questions there. Tough but fair. Hopefully, those two can forgive me for asking them. Let's get back over to Cami. So, uh, CND, the Nets, obviously, this has been a, a massive project for you two for some time now. How did it kind of uh, come about? CND Pickleball, the idea started about four years ago, where I teach tennis and pickleball at Omni La Costa in Carlsbad. We had set up those nets out of the bag and for, I don't know, a year and a half. And the members kept getting tired of every time putting, putting them up, taking them down, putting them in back, back in the bag. And so my brilliant husband, Darren, started thinking about how can I build a net that has wheels on it, move it off to the side of the cord, easy to move and just simple, just just a rollable pickleball net system. So he just started, you know, putting ideas together, talking to our fabricator. And next thing you know, built a net, made some changes to it. And in the last year and a half, we've started CND pickleball nets, traveling to tournaments. We are the net sponsor for the PPA. Very exciting. And a lot of facilities are starting to purchase our nets. It really, our net is ideal for multi-use courts. Obviously, if you can put in permanent net posts, that is the way to go. But if you would want a rollable permanent system that plays like a permanent net, we use a net with a cable system. If you still have tennis court and pickleball court, our net is perfect for that facility. Private homes that have basketball courts or homes that maybe don't want to have permanent net posts and they want to have events on their court, our net is great. In the last year and a half, really have been excited about where 
you know, where our company is going and uh, trying to get the word out. Have you seen a, a, you know, a relative kind of uptick in recent times, given that um, public pickleball is a, a difficult thing to come by these days? So I'm assuming there's a lot of people that either have space and wanted to set up a court for a while or for whatever reason are now thinking, yeah, a private court is the way to go like yourself. Has that kind of transferred to you guys? What's funny is Darren and I kind of been talking about this since this pandemic has been going on. We feel that we've gotten a lot more inquiries about our nets and seems like people are maybe, you know, realizing that we can't play open play. So maybe I'll put in a pickleball court. It's just been it's been kind of we thought that things were going to be slowing down, but actually they've kind of up during this time. Silver linings. You got to look for them, right? Absolutely. We're always trying to make little changes to our net system. We have two nets. Bobby Riggs has our other net, which is a truss net. And that basically sits more on the court. It does not have wheels. And that truss net is for facilities that have asphalt courts. That net weighs 130 pounds and our championship rollable net that you've played on, it weighs 230 pounds. Ooh. Big difference. Yeah, geez. And Bobby Riggs is back open now. I heard uh, that they're they're reopening the gates. Yeah, I got an email yesterday that Steve opened for singles and doubles. Oh, that's good stuff. We're, we've been spoiled here in Riverside County. We've been up and running for about two or three weeks now. Wow. Uh, is that for private games? No, it's golf, tennis, and pickleball. They just reopened. People have to wear masks, and you know the six feet thing is you know, advised, but that's not an easy kind of stipulation for a game like pickleball. My club, Palm Desert Resort, has been... We've had anywhere from 50 to 100 or more people coming out on a daily basis. Wow. So I've been teaching again. Do you have to play with your mask on? Ah, uh, that's a definite maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the problem has come where we've had uh, we've had a real heat spell here. A couple of weeks have gotten up to 110 or so, which is not normal for this time of year. And we had one lady who was wearing a mask and she had real trouble breathing and uh, fairly soon she passed out. And I think she broke both of her wrists because she fell over from heat exhaustion, something like that. Oh, no. Yeah, so right now people are kind of like, a lot of them are just keeping it around the neck. Everybody's kind of aware of how other people's comfort level is. And, you know, if one person on the court is really adamant, then the others typically do it as well. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's the wild west of this pandemic. Who knows? Yeah, out there you probably have to start at 6 a.m. or midnight. Well, let's not go crazy. <laughs> I think there really is only one six each day, and that's in, that's in the p.m. variety. I was just out in the desert playing some golf, so I know about that 109 degrees. You were golfing? I mean, you came out here. Why didn't you say hi? Oh, I'm hurt. Oh, sorry. We could have played golf. I thought I, I, I waved. No, I waved to you. You waved to me? Yeah. Oh, oh, that was you. Okay. Well, I could have played golf with you. I love golf now. Oh, well, next time I was out with two of my girlfriends and we played the Marriott Desert Springs course. Nice. The valley or the other one? We played palms. Okay. What'd you shoot? Oh, uh, you know, okay. So honestly. <laughs> okay, come on. This is my fifth time playing golf in 10 years. Okay, okay. So I shot a 90. Well, that's pretty good. Jeez. I thought you were going to say 140. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> Probably my first round, yes. No, no, no. You know what? I take that back. My bad. No, I shot a 90 the second day. No, I did. I shot 130 at the JW Marion. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a good day. 130. It was just a brutal day. They didn't have any ladies tees out, so we were playing in the white. So a lot of clubs I was not able to use. But I remember I was like, I don't know, I think I was like 25 over. It's a tough course. I mean, some of those ones, they're pretty short, narrow fairways, a lot of undulation. Uh, yeah, it's tricky. Luckily, you appear to be quite good at this whole pickleball thing. Maybe we should, you know, I think this is probably somewhat of a pickleball podcast. We should probably talk about something pickleball related. What do you think? That would probably be a good idea. We're going to take a quick break there from Cami for a word from our sponsor. Practice makes perfect, right? My name is Morgan Evans, and I have to tell you that practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes progress. That's why we've created Coach Me Pickleball. At Coach Me Pickleball, you'll find an extensive and growing library of lessons on topics covering every aspect of pickleball for every level of player. For one small monthly fee, you'll get access to every video in our library with new content added every month. Check out coachmepickleball.com to sign up for a free seven-day membership.
Okay, let's head back to Cami, see what's happening. So you had another outstanding year last year, I think culminating in winning the national senior title in singles and women's, I believe. That is true, yes. Oh, that's amazing. You always seem to play against your uh, your pickleball bestie, Jen Dawson, in the final of the singles. Is it getting tiring? Would you like someone else to come up and uh, challenge? No, not really. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that means they're, they're younger than me. Playing Jen in singles is always a battle. Not only on the court, just as being partners and best friends and it's you know it's it's difficult i can imagine but it always seems like you two you know it never gets heated it always it seems so amicable and it's and it's really uh, it's great for the sport in a lot of ways i'd say so hopefully no one comes in to knock one of you out of that uh, top two positions anytime soon i hope not every year new players are coming up and you gotta keep your skills up and and be ready but i really enjoy singles a lot i used to enjoy it i enjoy watching it more now but you're not a bad coach for uh for that young man you coach <laughs> that young man mr mcguffin well hopefully hopefully i can be of service to you someday you never seem to need help so maybe one day what's the head what's the head to head at the moment uh, with you and jen Ooh. I was hoping you would have that. Oh, I can't, I'm not. I can't be your statistician. Oh, uh, you know, honestly, I don't know, but we're probably even. It, how it seems to have been working out is maybe I might win nationals, and then she beats me at U.S. Open last year, and then I might beat her at TOC, and then she beats me. So we kind of share. Is there a Richard Williams that's pulling the strings here for you two? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no. <laughs> so, so you don't think Darren uh, is getting together with Steve and, you know, trying to figure out how to divide this uh, truckload of medals that you two have accumulated? <laughs> they might be, you know, they might be drinking a mm. beer and, you yeah, know, talking about, all right, <laughs> whose turn is it this tournament? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe. Good stuff. So now, obviously, you've you come from a much more impressive tennis background than most. The WTA for ten years. What? Uh, when did you retire? Oh, I retired in nineteen ninety four. Crowning accomplishments in in uh, tennis. What, what do you feel like? Uh, you look back on the biggest. Oh, I would probably say making the quarterfinals with my sister in doubles at the Australian Open. Oh, wow. And and I would say the round is 16 in singles at the Australian Open. You know, that Australia was good to me. Yeah, they're a nice bunch. There's no doubt about it. Oh, I love that. I love that country. It seems like your particular way of living um, suits Australia pretty well. There's no one. <laughs> you, you're literally my, my kind of token Australian uh, at every tournament I go to. If it hasn't ended well, which it usually does, doesn't in terms of gold or nothing you're always there you or darren are usually there with a beer to pick me back up it's fantastic we're always there to help people out and some of these young kids don't know how to travel and we make sure we provide you know all kinds of stuff for them <laughs> <laughs> that's it you're, you're, you're looking after the entire community absolutely <laughs> <laughs> we should start a uh, pickleball wild GoFundMe account just to make sure that there's always enough IPAs to go around at the end. Absolutely. I think we just need a sponsor. Mm. Oh, that's a good idea. An IPA sponsor. You know, maybe I should go talk to Stone Brewery, which is right down the road from my house. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I like uh -huh. some of their stuff. Are you an IPA fan or are you more of a lager, pilsner? What do you like? No, I'm an IPA girl. Ah, good, 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 good. Yeah, I mean, after a pickleball tournament, you're hot and you're sweaty and it's like ready for the IPA. So it's more like a Bud Light Lime, just a nice, refreshing, cold, mm. cool you down. And then, then after a little relaxation, then there is the IPA. <laughs> I wish I had that level of restraint. <laughs> Everything tastes like water after after that uh, last loss. So, yeah, sure. I've just got to try to avoid the double IPAs. That's that usually where it goes wrong. Yeah, not good. Yeah. And then I start coaching people that aren't even on Selkirk. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a train wreck. So, obviously, right now there's a hiatus. Um, what was your next tournament planned? We were going to go out to Phoenix. Ooh, Phoenix. Oh, yes. PPA. 
where they're net sponsors. So we bring 10 to 12 nets out for them, for the pros to play on. So yeah, unfortunately that did not happen. And I'm not sure when the next tournament will be. Perhaps TOC, but there's no guarantee, is there? No. In fact, I'd be a little surprised. Who knows about nationals? They're talking about the US Open tennis coming to uh, Indian Wells, which means I don't think nationals pickleball would be there. So maybe we can host it at uh, your new court and just have it really drawn out. You know, very, <laughs> very socially responsible in terms of distancing. Yeah, we, we might need a few more other courts, though. Two teams oh, fly in yeah. from wherever, play one match, fly home, <laughs> extend the season by about four years. Four years is a long time. Wow, better than nothing, right? Jeez. Well, that, that's true. <laughs> that's true. But yeah, if, if you want to be the tournament director and organize something like that, Oh, now I have a hair appointment uh, that weekend, actually. So, yeah, I can't quite make it for that one, but uh, I can recommend someone, perhaps. Steve Dawson, maybe. Speaking of hair, just to digress, I need one. You need... A haircut. You need a haircut. Oh, yes. This seems like trouble. I've heard nothing, but I need a haircut from my Jen uh, for the last, well, six weeks, and she's been trying to cut her own hair, and I haven't had the heart to say we're going to edit that whole section out. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> we can send you a guy, though. They're, her guy's name is Harado. She's been seeing religiously for 15 years or so. I think he does road trips, so we can send him out to you, and we can cover the whole uh, Encinitas and well, just the whole West Coast. I love it. Can you pass along also a um, manicurist and pedicurist? Manny Petty, yep. Yeah, okay. for sure. Um, I'll just round him up in a little, little bus and just ship him out there. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, it'll be part of your Selkirk sponsorship, really. Oh, keep that hair, hair looking good. I love that company. Thank you. <laughs> hey, they know how to uh, take care of their own, for sure. Regarding your game, I've always watched your pickleball game and felt like it, it almost looks a little too good to be true in terms of how smooth. And I was looking, whenever anyone's around, I was like, ah, there's Cammy again, just cooler than the other side of the pillow. <laughs> it always seems like you've got nothing but time on your hands waiting for something that you've known is about to happen for 45 minutes. And when it happens, I, I, I don't quite understand how it works. Is that how you played tennis? Did, was it always just so graceful, I guess? Well, thank you for those kind words. That's right, I'm obligated, really. I think Rob Barnes tells me to say these things. Growing up in tennis, I had two coaches. I had a footwork coach uh, who worked on, obviously, footwork and serve and volley and movement. He was big about movement. And then I had my other coach who was more into the fundamentals. So growing up, you know, I had those two advantages and playing tennis or pickleball, just the movement I taught correctly. Maybe that's what you are seeing when I'm out there. I think movement is really, really important. If you think I look smooth, I guess I have to thank my coach. What was his or her name? His name was Del Little. Del Little. Yep. Tracy Austin and Pete Sampras. We all went to Del. Well, Dell, if you're listening, we need to get you on the podcast. Yeah, he worked us. I remember doing split steps. He would make us do like 10 split steps and then react to the ball. Oh, nice. It does seem like you can spot good tennis players and great tennis players, you know, from someone who's never played a racket sport by, you know, their split steps. But it seems like, you know, the really good ones just have that perfect timing where it's not a whole bunch of wasted energy and just a hideous amounts of bouncing around, hoping that one of those steps is landing at the right time, which often was my strategy in tennis. I was like, I don't really know. I'm, I'm constantly playing on either grass courts or clay courts. Or back in Australia, we had a big, a big kind of mix of courts to play on growing up. Was the Aussie Open hard or grass when you played it? My first year at the Australian Open was the last year at Kuyong on grass. And then it moved to the rebound ace, which was a horrible, horrible surface. Now it's changed. So unfortunately, I had stopped playing, so I didn't get to play on the new surface. <laughs> no, I agree with that rebound ace. The Hopman Cup used to use it as well over in Perth and trying to train on that stuff. That ball bounces way too high. It's like playing on chewing gum. <laughs> yeah. Your feet would get stuck and Ugh. ankles were going left and right. Yeah, no poor planning for sure. Did you uh, Did you like playing on grass? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. It's so nice. My game was always the attack game, you know, serve and volley, come, get to net, the, because the less ground strokes I can hit the better and that was another Dell Little was focused on 
footwork and volleys and serve. So yeah, it. Uh, I love the grass, but I always not well. <laughs> at Wimbledon. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you played Wimbledon, that that's more than impressive enough. Yeah, it was um it, looking back, it was it's pretty unbelievable and to to say yeah, I got to play Wimbledon, you know, I don't even know, seven times, mm. eight times. That's amazing. You know, getting the to- Wimbledon towels, I was actually even in the official Wimbledon book. Ooh. They have days, so they have day 1 with, you know, might be at that time, Martina Navratilova, day two, oh, it's John McEnroe. Well, day, I think it's day five, there I am, front, right in the front on day five, there me, there I am serving at Wimbledon. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Wow. That's, uh, <laughs> I, I've got to see that book. I'm going to, I'm going to stalk you somehow. I will show it to you the next time we uh, hook up. Oh, I'm actually looking at the book right now. The official Wimbledon annual 1992 book. And it's got a picture of, <laughs> and how funny is this? Steffi and Andre. Oh, wow. There you go. And and how does your hair look in, in 92? <laughs> um, it was beautiful. It was lovely. <laughs> oh, good. Well, congratulations. I've always had short hair. So right now, if you saw my hair, you'd be like, oh my God. You know, you can cut it yourself. Yeah, I've thought about it, but. For some reason, um, I'm too scared. <laughs> Cammy McGregor, fearless Cammy, <laughs> yeah, aggressive tennis playing Cammy, is afraid of a pair of scissors. I watched you of a lady cutting her hair, and it yeah yeah it, she kept going and going and going. It did not turn out well. Oh, so you had a, a you know a traumatizing experience, and now you're okay. I understand. Yeah, I actually use a little. Um, it's like a little buggy. Honestly, it has like a razor blade on the back, but it has wheels on the front, and you kind of strap it on your finger, and you just—I just drive this uh, this mobile razor over my head, and I and I make like broom broom noises as well. Um, <laughs> as the, uh, it's pretty good. It takes about five minutes in the shower, and yeah, I could teach you. I don't know if you want this level of shortness, but um, maybe. Yeah, I, I've I've seen your hair, and uh... oh, you have. No, not many people have. There's like six of them. Yeah, I have a few more than you. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Um, I think I appreciate the offer, but I'm gonna wait till Jen's Geraldo comes down. Geraldo, yes. Well, she's her appointment is at three o'clock this afternoon, and I think it's gonna be the highlight of her month for sure. So I will report back if it was a complete win, or if <laughs> I just have to say it was a complete win. <laughs> so now you you. We're talking about your tennis, and it sounded as if you played quite an aggressive um, game, serve and volley, attacking a lot, getting up there. In pickleball, you know, I've often watched your mixed and women's doubles game in particular and thought that you you typically are kind of erring more on the defensive side. Is that a conscious thing, or is, this, is it just you playing, you know, your style? I think it's pretty much me playing my style. Even though in tennis, I was always attacking, but when you're playing up at the net, it's a lot of more touch and feel, especially in doubles. And I think that's why in pickleball doubles, I'm more trying to be patient, trying to wait for that right time to pull the trigger and just a little bit more. I think that's just more my style, the touch and feel. I don't really, I don't really think about it. It just, that's sort of just how I, you know, play. If you wind forward the clock, um, say, four or five years, um, you know, more players are involved and the game, I think, is becoming more offensive, faster, paddles are getting uh, more powerful. Do you think something like that would inspire you to feel like, all right, I've got to really take the gloves off now, or would you stick to your guns? We've all noticed how the game is amping up a lot more tennis players and racquetball players are coming up and noticing how people are taking a few more chances. So I, I'm aware of that. And, you know, a lot of people are going to two handed backhands. And so I'm kind of working on that too. Ooh, game changer. (laughs) Yeah, definitely trying to be aggressive, obviously at the right time um, and still be able to soften up, you know, when I need to. You're thinking of going towards the two-handed backhand. Is that something you think you'll use primarily as 
um, an initial attack or as a counterpunch, a little bit of everything. Because um, I feel like with you having the, the single-handed backhand volley uh, compared to you know, the two-handed counterparts out there, there's a real advantage in terms of the size of your comfort zone that you can effectively block at least, um, perhaps not fire back quite so easily. What do you think? Yeah, it's the the two-handed backhand is more going to be more of a counterpunch because in tennis I'm a one-handed backhand volleyer and it's it's just so natural mm. to be out there and pick a ball um, when a hard ball comes at me is just to just to you know hit that one-handed backhand. It's it's when you get that hard ball coming at you. And going, okay, let's counter that with another two-handed hard ball back at you. And it's just so unnatural for me to take a two-handed backhand volley. It just, I never two-handed backhand volley in tennis. So it's like, this is weird. This, <laughs> this doesn't feel comfortable to do that. So I've gotten better. Even Jen, my partner, she looks at me. She's like, wow, look at that two-handed backhand. I'm like, I oh, know, pretty lucky. <laughs> so... So hopefully it's not as ugly as it feels. You make your own luck. I, I want to see it though. I want to be one of the first to really get a glimpse of this. Takes oh, take some video and send it to me. I might be able to help. Right. Only if you you know give me some pointers. I will. That's totally. That's a fair deal. As long as you keep supplying beverages after uh, after my many losses, then I literally I will just stay in your corner. I'll be your personal coach. Don't tell Tyson. Tyson doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, Cammy, this has been so much fun. Thank you for spending time with me. It's been a lot of fun, Morgan. Thanks for having me. You are welcome. Hopefully we'll do it again soon and we'll get back on court soon. You come out to the desert and you can train here as much as you want. Yeah, that sounds like a fantastic idea. And, and next time we come out for golf, I'm definitely going to hit you up. Perfect. That sounds great. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only... Cammy McGregor. Okay. Thanks, Morgan. This podcast was powered by Selkirk. This podcast was also brought to you by the new Vanguard, coming in the summer of 2020. I'm Morgan Evans, and this has been More or Less Pickleball. I uh, have no real game plan here. We can talk about anything and everything. Um, yeah, we'll just wig it. Should be fun. Sounds good. I look forward yeah. to it. Let's keep it, uh, keep it cash. Yeah, I like it. I wish it wasn't the morning. You know, we could have a beer right now and... Well, <laughs> you know we're recording. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we yeah, uh, we we often end up using these random bits that um, we talk about before the show, and then uh, they end up being a little add-on thing, and we never tell people. Never. <laughs> Tyson's little kids started asking. You working for? And uh, yeah, that was. I think that ended up being the name of the show or something like that. <laughs> Do scorpions fart? Yeah. Well, do they? Uh, I I have no idea. If they do, you can't hear it. It's, it's, a, it's a little baby puff. <laughs> I'll have to listen to the podcast again.